Another beautiful morning or day or whatever in the shop here. It's actually quite nice outside. Um, so we have to put some covers on, uh, do some measuring. I'm going to find out the distance between the top of the piston and the deck. I'm going to take the time to do a little calculation on compression ratio. I have a head gasket selected. I just want to know what the compression, compression ratio is going to be. It's final compression ratio. We are going to have the two car tuned, retuned. It, it was tuned for the flat tops. These are a negative 9 cc, meaning there's 9 cc's removed out of the combustion chamber from the dome of the piston, which increases compression. This car runs off E85, so that will be a significant uh, efficiency upgrade for this car. So I degreased the car already. Um, I needed to do that. I'm going to also be pulling the, the torque tube. I'll make a separate video on that and I'll link it at the end of this video. Uh, so. Let's get started with the day and uh, get some more accessories onto the, the motor here so it's ready to go in the car. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Leaving two bolts out, that's for the chain for lifting the motor. There's a special socket for these. Uh, it's in my other room though. So I just grabbed this. It's a 27 mil. This sensor is hard to get at. If you do a motor bill, just replace the dang thing. It's uh, kind of a piece of crap. They fail pretty often. All right, we're about to check deck height. This is normally a step that I do previous to actually full assembly. I'll do a pre-assembly, figure out where the deck height is before even machining the deck, figure out where the deck height is compared to where I want it to be. And if it's a real high-end motor, I'll typically take deck height from each end, deck height from each end on the other side, and I'll figure out where it's off and how. And then uh, when they machine it, I'll make sure that it takes off the correct amount to get the deck height that I want. When I put it on top dead, what I'm looking for is for the piston to stop moving and then I go just a little bit further because there's a leeway area where you have so many degrees of movement before the piston will start coming back down again. So as soon as it stops and I just go a little bit past that, then I know I'm good. Uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to check one piston on each side because this thing's already been decked. It should be flat in theory. The gauge is zeroed out right now. Bring it over. And we have almost 11 thousandths below the deck. So now I'm going to lift this up over to this side, make sure I'm still zero over here. Now this is going to be opposite of the measurement side I took before. Now if you had a flat top, you would want to measure in line with the wrist pin because that's going to be your center line. But when you have these, you have to measure from both sides and subtract the difference or you know, go in between the difference. So I'm at zero again. Actually, I'm a little, little off from zero, but I'll put that in my figuring it out. Wow, that's way below the deck. Okay, we have 21 thousandths, 21 and 11, so that would be 16. Now I have to put that into figuring out my compression ratio, so I'll write that down. Okay, so that's that side. Cylinder number six is on top dead. We have 12. Go back up. Zero. So we have 12 thou in there. And we're going to go across to the other side. Oh, this is going to be a little bit different. So now I'm going to CC the heads and try and make sure I get the correct head on the correct side per CC difference. 12 and 28. What's in between 12 and 28? 12, 28, about 20. Yeah, 20. 
So I got 20 on that one. And we'll get this put away and we'll CC some cylinder heads. That's another reason I usually do this before I put the motor together. So that I can say, hey, take 10 off this side, take 5 off this side to make them even. So I'm pretty level that way. This way I am sitting. So I'm sitting like this, which is okay. I'm going to CC these heads. I just want to know which way it's sitting because I'm going to fill it up. I have two holes in this plate. Fill it up from one and let the air escape up the other. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on here with a little grease between the plate and the head. And uh, that allows a seal. And then the air can escape out of the one corner. This is just for weight. All it's going to do is make sure that that grease stays sealed. Dirty water, but whatever, it's water. I'm gonna go to 60. And I'm gonna put 55 in. And then I'm gonna use, refill it again. Uh, the reason I'm not pulling the full amount is I don't know how much to trust the, the very last little section of this, so. Okay, so I still have five remaining. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some more into here. Now I only put 20 in here, which gives me 15 to use, and I did that because I don't think I'm going to need any more than that. It just started to come out. I used 8 cc's there, so 55 plus 8 would be 63. So I got 63 cc chamber here, which is accurate, that, that seems right. Stock is 64.5, I believe. So it's been milled a couple times, and that would, that would make sense. Although these are uh, CNC chambers, so I'm surprised that it is that, that low yet. Maybe this out in the head's been milled more than I thought, now that I think about it. Yeah, those chambers are opened up. So we'll write that down. Now we gotta do this guy here. We do end to end, just in case they milled it funny. And uh, then I don't know what I'll do. <laughs> but I want to at least know. I want to be able to acknowledge it. Oh! Ah, I forgot to put the spark plug in. <laughs> I'm like, this is taking too much. What's going on here? Oh my goodness. Spark plug's over here, big dummy. I'm on the floor now. Oh, sometimes. Just some days. I do wonder about myself sometimes. Okay. I ain't gotta start over. That sucks. Oop. Wow. That was quick. 55, 50, 30. Oh. Well, that's interesting. So this one's only got uh, 60 cc. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like that. Mm hmm. Interesting. I finished doing the CC of the heads, and both of them measure out exactly the same. I had uh, 63 on one end and 60 on the other. So I'm actually headed to the machine shop right now, and I'm going to have them mill one side a little bit more than the other. Uh, that way I can get closer to 60 on both sides. Of course, the, the 60 will probably turn into 59 and a half, but I'd much rather have it even and consistent. That way I don't have any crazy compression changes. So that's actually where I'm headed now. Uh, we'll uh, see if we can get some footage, see if they'll let me take some footage of the actual milling of the head for you guys and uh, take a look at how that goes. So we'll see you in a little bit, hopefully. So 
so I'm pulling into the machine shop now here. A uh, couple things a lot of people don't realize is uh, when it comes to technicians uh, like myself or even machine shop people, a lot of them, food buys you a discount. <laughs> it's kind of a funny little thing, but uh, I picked up some Dairy Queen before I came over here and uh, he's going to machine these heads for the cost of the Dairy Queen, or re-machine them again. I mean, he's already got paid once. I paid full price the first time, but that's no big deal. It doesn't bother me a bit. I figured, bring him some Dairy Queen. He said, yeah, I'll do it for some Dairy Queen. So that's what we're going to work out here and get it done. Get longer as it goes. Okay, we got the cylinder heads back from the machine, and uh, I'm going to blow out a little bit of metal shavings out of these things. Now I need to CC the heads again and see if they're at where they should be, at least equal. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, checked the CCs on both cylinder heads. Still got the plugs in this one, gotta pull those out. But this one ended up perfect. A uh, little bit less CC than I'd like. I was hoping to not go below 59, but it went a little bit, no big deal. 58.5, 58.5, this one 58.5, and 59. So he must not have had the level quite perfect. So, you know, when he does this, it's a, it's a level that's placed on the machine. Um, both directions and uh, the one head that I have a video clip of he must have when he moved things around it must have shifted its level for this direction so trimmed more or less off one side or the other and uh, basically what happened was this side ended up a little high because when we were going across we were taking more meat off this end than this end to try and equal it up because this was a uh, 63 and 60 and so we wanted to make it even so we took more meat off of this side and when we did so it must have shifted just a little bit because it ended up hitting this side more leaving this corner untouched until the very last minute so we ended up taking an extra pass off of this one over this one and I was hoping that that would be enough to make this one have an, a little bit more compression um, have one just a little bit less cc's than the other and it is but not as much as i was hoping for you know 58.5 and 59 versus straight 58.5 isn't very much it's two tenths on average two and a half tenths so i uh i wish i could have got just a little more but it is what it is no big deal my whole reason for wanting to have them a little bit different is because of the deck height the deck height on this motor is a little bit off from side to side it's off by four thousandths of an inch so i was hoping to be able to compensate with the cylinder heads but yeah, it's no big deal really it's not gonna this motor is not top-notch crazy build you know it's just a decent build it's not like I'm on the border of every spec you can possibly do to maximize the motor as much as possible so regardless it'll still run phenomenal and way better than it used to the compression ratio is gonna come in at about 12.6 to 1 probably now now I gotta redo the calculations because I was going off of it 60 cc and now it's a little bit less so i will redo those and that's going to wrap up the rest of the this video today it's going to be a short shorter video apparently more or less got wrapped up with dealing with the cylinder heads than anything else i degreased the car you know no big deal but uh we will be seeing you on the next episode when i get a little more done i will be putting hopefully putting the motor in the car um on the next episode i will be having a separate episode added to this video and that'll be for the torque tube so if you want to see what's involved in rebuilding a torque tube on a Corvette that'll be the video tagged at the end of this screen I'll probably put it right up here in the corner so uh, 
yeah, go ahead and click on that link. As soon as it shows up, it means the video is up. Otherwise, hit the notification bell if you're seeing this beforehand, and you'll get a chance to uh, see that, assuming you've already subscribed already. But uh, if you haven't, please like, share, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.